Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm on my way into Luft Los Angeles Bike Shop, which is the home of the Blackheart Bike Company. And today I'm gonna to be testing out the new all-road aluminum version, which promises to offer the same ride experience as their flagship titanium version at half the price. All right, so we are off. This is gonna take a little bit to get to the trails. I do have to ride through uh, downtown Santa Monica to get there. Not my favorite thing to do, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Come on in. All right. So that was a little bit hectic. Now getting into the Santa Monica Mountains a little bit, a little bit quieter, we can finally talk about the bike. So for a little bit of history, I did test ride the Titanium All-Road a couple years ago, and I actually really liked that bike. Now on the spectrum of what we call gravel bikes these days, the All-Road bikes from Blackheart, they lean way more towards the road end of the spectrum than anything else. The geometry is very snappy, and it makes the bike feel like a road bike. Now it's pretty common for people to ask, uh, isn't a gravel bike just a road bike with bigger tires on it? And the answer is mostly no, actually. But in the case of the Blackheart bike, kind of yes. Like I said, the geometry is very sharp. The head tube angle on this size 52 is, I think it's 71.5, as opposed to say my Specialized Diverge, which is a degree slacker than that. The wheelbase on the Blackheart is also very compact for a size 52. It's right around a thousand millimeters. Again, for comparison on the Specialized Diverge, it's more like 1,025 millimeters. And then there's a lot of other minor differences that add up to a whole different type of bike than your typical kind of relaxed gravel bike. For instance, the chain stays on this bike are really short. I think the rear center is like 422 millimeters. And the bottom bracket actually sits up a little bit higher than like a typical gravel bike. Uh, I think the bottom bracket drop on the Diverge is close to 80 millimeters, whereas on this bike, it's almost 10 millimeters less than that. So all of that adds up to a bike that feels really lively, very much like a road bike but it can fit big tires so it can hit the trails. Now, how big you ask? In 700C, it can fit up to 40 millimeter tires, which I'm riding now. And then if you wanna use a 650B wheel size, you can go up to a 50 millimeter tire, which again, for gravel tire clearances these days, isn't actually that much. And so again, we're seeing that the Blackheart kind of leans toward the road end of the spectrum. Now, this particular bike is outfitted with the SRAM group set. You got the wireless shifting front and rear. A build like this would set you back roughly 4,000 to $4,500 US, which is not actually that bad, all things considered. Well, the frame set alone will set you back $1,500 US, which is half of the cost of the titanium version, which of course begs the question of whether or not it's worth it to actually upgrade to the titanium version. Now I'll speak to the material properties in just a little bit, but it should be noted that the geometries are identical between the aluminum and the titanium version. And the aluminum frame actually weighs a touch less than the titanium frame. So ultimately, I think it's all gonna come down to material preference and the ride quality of the two materials, whether perceived or not. Now, I haven't actually hit any rough trails yet on this bike, so I can't quite speak to the ride feel on gravel yet, but I can talk about the material for just a second. Now, it does seem like a lot of companies are starting to revisit aluminum as a viable frame material. Now, in the past, aluminum was used because of its really high strength to weight ratio. It's a widely available material and it's very affordable. The main criticism, of course, of aluminum is that it can be harsh and chattery, especially when the going gets rough. But I think we're starting to come back from that view of aluminum a little bit, especially because different manufacturing techniques and different alloys are being used in aluminum these days. For instance, this Blackheart alloy frame is not your typical 6061 aluminum alloy, but rather it's a 7005 aluminum, which is an alloy that contains higher amounts of zinc, which actually increases the strength of this alloy, which presumably means you can use a thinner wall and get away with a lighter frame that's still just as strong as a 6061. Now there is a lot of confusion when it comes to the differences between the strength of material versus the stiffness. Now I'm not a material scientist, but I do know that the strength of a material has to do with how much stress that it can withstand before it actually yields or breaks. Whereas the stiffness of a material is its sort of relative tendency to spring back to its original shape given a load. Now these are actually two completely different properties. If you take a quick look at this graph here, the strength of a material is generally quantified as one of these two parameters, 
the yield strength or the ultimate yield strength. Whereas the stiffness of a material is really just the slope of this plot in the elastic region on the stress strain curve. So to try to draw any conclusions regarding stiffness versus strength and making generalized statements about aluminum as a frame material, probably not going to get us very far. Now on the flip side of the coin, 7075 aluminum is more expensive. And I think that's part of the marketing for this bike is that it's a quote higher end aluminum, which does mean that it's more expensive and it is a stronger material than 6061 alloy all else being equal. But then the question turns to whether or not you need that strength. I mean, everyday riding, even in really treacherous conditions, you will never see anywhere near the yield strength on either of these alloys. And realistically, the strength of the frame is all gonna come down to the quality of the welds as well as the frame design itself. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the fact that this alloy is more expensive than a quote, lower grade aluminum doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting a better frame. I guess is all I'm trying to say. Now again, I haven't really tested this on any really rough terrain yet, but what I will say so far is that coming through the streets of Santa Monica to get to the park, I mean, there are some pretty rough roads, some pretty big potholes, just things that I wasn't expecting in the road. But interestingly, I was expecting a much harsher ride. Now, some of the proponents of aluminum as a frame material claim that on a modern gravel bike with large volume tires, the frame material starts to matter less and less. And so I don't know if it was just the design of the frame, if there's compliance built in, or if it's just the fact that I'm running 40 millimeter tires at low pressure that I actually felt pretty comfortable even when the streets got pretty chattery. Now I think there is something to be said about the tendency towards bigger tires on gravel bikes now and it would be almost impossible to isolate the effect of the shock absorption to the tire or the frame material. Oh boy getting a little bit steep to keep talking at you. Give me a minute. Oh yeah definitely when you're out of the saddle pushing it feels really responsive. That may be the biggest thing I noticed so far, actually. It's just kind of when you really get on it, how quickly it gives you that feedback. All right, almost there. I think this is just about the top of here. Oh yeah. Let's do one of these. Not too bad, huh? So we're at the top here. This is Inspiration Point, if you're curious, in Will Rogers State Park, Santa Monica Mountains. We used to come here a lot, actually, when we lived here but uh, now we live way far east. I think after, you know, 10 miles or so, so far of just rough roads and some dirt climbs, I'm actually coming around to the idea that aluminum can be built to be pretty compliant. Now, I don't have the data to attribute that specifically to this frame material, but what I can say is that Altogether, this is actually a pretty compliant bike, much more than any of the previous generation aluminum road bikes, for sure. My first road bike was a 2001 Specialized Allay road bike, which had an aluminum frame, carbon fork, skinny 23 millimeter tires. I mean, that thing was super chattery. And this thing here is just no comparison, way more compliant, way more comfortable than that. So when you picture an aluminum frame, if you're picturing one of those early 2000s kind of aluminum road bikes, that's just not what they are today. And this Blackheart so far is a great example of how aluminum as a material can actually be built into a very compliant bike. Okay, but I realize that's a lot of talk for not actually having descended on this bike yet. Let's get down the hill and then I'll give you an update on what I thought. Ooh, very sandy right now. Now this is not a rough trail by any means, but there is actually a lot of chatter. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. I don't feel like my teeth are chattering out of my head. It does still feel pretty snappy, but I think that's good. I think that's what you want. Okay. There's some pretty good ruts right here. Purposely hitting the roots there. <laughs> Not bad at all. Not bad. Okay, so I'm down the hill now. It was a pretty short descent, but it was definitely long enough to give me a good sense for the bike's feel, which I have to say, I was very pleasantly surprised. I really was expecting a relatively harsh ride, but there was something in there. I don't know if it's the tires or the frame material or just the design of the bike itself, just enough to take the edge off those really big hits. And I didn't get to the bottom feeling totally crushed. Now the trail was really sandy, so I was taking a little bit easy on these tires which are not particularly knobby. But there were a couple of times when I was purposely hitting those little washboard rocky sections or even the rooty sections, which got a little bit intense at times. And so if I'm comparing this bike to the titanium version, I will say that I recall that the titanium version may be a little bit more compliant. The titanium material just has like a little bit more 
I don't know, somehow it just takes the edge off a little bit more than like an aluminum bike or a, even a steel bike in some cases. Again, I think it's very subtle and a lot of you are gonna claim that it's probably just in my head. I do think that the titanium version is different from say a carbon bike in the way that it absorbs shock and also different from the way that this aluminum bike absorbs shock. Very hard to describe and almost impossible to quantify. So all I can really say is that this aluminum bike definitely exceeded my expectations as far as a ride quality. Okay, so of course the question, who is this bike for? Well, it's definitely for somebody who prioritizes riding road first and foremost, but who may be a little bit gravel curious and wants a bike that is capable of going off road putting some bigger tires on there and exploring the trails without sacrificing that snappiness of a true road frame. Now, if I'm being perfectly honest, the differences between the aluminum and the titanium in terms of pure ride feel, I don't know. I think they're kind of negligible, to be honest. I mean, I could definitely tell that there is a difference, but I'm not sure if it's $1,500 worth of a difference. Now, for those people who swear by titanium, more power to you. If you've got the money, it's an incredible material. It'll last you a lifetime. But then again, you know, so is aluminum. And I think Blackheart have done a great job putting this more economical version of their flagship titanium all-road bike in this aluminum version. Now definitely check out their website if you're curious, but you can buy these as complete bikes, but you can also buy the frame set, which is the frame fork and I think seat post for $1,500, which honestly is not too bad for a small boutique gravel bike brand. Again, definitely check out their website for more information. I'll put a link down in the description. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.